Chapter 21 Israel Israel knew telling Sophia was the right thing to do, but that didn't make it any easier. He rehearsed the words he planned to say as he walked back to the large room. Nice to see you made it back. Sophia's tone carried a harsh undercurrent, but Israel couldn't blame her. After all, he'd left without explaining what was going on, which was the only reason he was back now. Want to tell me why you ran out of here? Her eyes took in his soaked clothing and her brow lifted. And why you're all wet? One of the kids got lost when the storm hit and Tiffany went missing looking for them. I went to help look for them. Sophia's face hardened as she folded her arms across her chest. Tiffany, huh? And why did you have to go? I didn't have to go, Sophia. I wanted to. Israel shook his head, berating himself for believing that Sophia had changed. She hadn't. The last four days had been an act for her, a way for her to feign being a friend to get Israel to open up to her. He couldn't believe he had been so naive, and he hated that he'd agreed to her invitation in the first place. I'm sorry if I made you think I was interested in anything more than friendship. I accepted your invitation to come as friends, but I told you then Tiffany still had my heart. That hasn't changed, and she needs me now. You know, I thought you would realize when we went out tonight that I can give you everything Tiffany can, maybe more, but I refuse to be second place in any man's heart. Second place? She didn't even have a place in his heart. He'd been naive to think her concern was really about him and not about her and what she wanted. But he was not going to apologize for loving Tiffany. Sophia, I... He was interrupted by her frustrated sigh. Fine, run off with your girlfriend. I don't think we would have worked out anyway. Israel blinked at her, confused by her sudden shift. Her anger had dissipated as quickly as it emerged, replaced with resignation, but he had neither the time nor the energy to spend on trying to figure her out. I have to go, but I can call you a cab. Sophia rolled her eyes. Don't bother. I'm not ready to leave yet, and I'm sure I can find someone to take me home. Before he could say another word, Sophia had disappeared back into the crowd her sights clearly set on her next victim. Hoping he wasn't too late, he hurried back to where he'd left Tiffany. The ambulance was just loading her in the back as he reached them, and he climbed up beside her, grabbing her hand as he sat down. You made it. I told you I would. Her eyes glistened as she looked at him and then bit her lip. Israel, I'm so sorry I pushed you away. The doors of the ambulance closed and the EMT sat down on the other side of Tiffany, but she didn't seem to care about his presence. Her eyes were fixed firmly on Israel. You know the pain I was having the last night we went out? Israel nodded, remembering the grimaces that had distorted her face as she clutched her stomach, but brushed it off when he asked about it. Well, I went to the doctor the next day. Israel glanced at the EMT. Did Tiffany really want to share this story now with the stranger listening? She told me that I have endometriosis. Tiffany, I... Again, he glanced at the EMT, who avoided his eyes as he tried to look busy and like he wasn't listening. No, let me get this out before I lose my nerve. She paused and took a deep breath before saying, She told me I may not be able to have kids. Silence fell in the ambulance at the conclusion of her statement, and for a second, Israel merely blinked at her. She was so young and healthy, how could she not be able to have children? A million thoughts flooded his mind, and shame filled him when the first thoughts were purely selfish. Would he be okay if she couldn't have kids? Would he be okay not having a son who looked like him, or a daughter he knew shared his genes? And then he realized this must have been her fear as well, 
that he wouldn't be okay with the news. He thought about how hard this must have been for her. She must have not only had to deal with her own grief, but also her worry in how he would take the news. And now he was playing right into her fear. Is that why you broke it off? Because you were afraid I wouldn't be okay with that news? Her lips mashed together for a minute, and he knew she was trying to keep the tears back. You said you wanted a big family, and I won't be able to give that to you. I figured it would be better to end it before we both got hurt. Israel squeezed her hand. Families come in many ways. I do want a big family, but it's more important that I have the perfect woman to spend my life with. God will take care of the rest. As he said the words, he realized they were true. Though he had always planned to have a natural family, he knew there were many babies who needed a forever home that they could adopt, and fostering was also a possibility. You really believe that? I do. Tiffany, it's been a long time since I've met someone I could see spending my life with. I don't want to lose that. Me either. I'm so sorry I didn't tell you. I should have. Israel smiled as the ambulance came to a stop. I don't blame you, but I'm certainly glad you did now. The EMT cleared his throat. I hate to break up this touching moment, but we're here. Can I take her inside now? Of course. Israel squeezed Tiffany's hand one more time before letting go. I'll be right here. It was a few hours later when they finally released Tiffany with a pair of crutches, a walking boot, a prescription for some painkillers, and a diagnosis of a type 2 sprain. Type 1s were the mildest, so a type 2 meant she needed to stay off her feet for a few days and then use the walking boot after that. It would certainly make her job harder, but not impossible. At least she had a good team who could help her at the resort. Thank you for staying with me, Tiffany said, as they sat down on the bench outside to wait for Chance to pick them up and take them back to their cars at the resort. I'm so sorry that we lost this week due to my stupidity. Israel turned to her and cupped her cheek. First of all, you are not stupid. Silly, maybe. But hopefully you'll trust me to handle the big news with you in the future. She nodded, her eyes locked intently with his. Second, you should know this by now, but just in case you don't yet, I'll tell you again. Even though a hospital is not the setting I had in mind, there is no place I'd rather be than with you. He ran his thumb across her lips before leaning in to kiss her. Though the position was awkward, he did not let that distract him from the feeling of joy that surged through him at her touch. It might only have been a week, but he had missed this feeling, and he never wanted to lose it again. The honking of a horn caused Israel to jump back, and he whipped around to find Chance and Mary Beth smiling at them. I hate to interrupt the moment, Chance said with a wide grin, but I was told you two needed a ride. To be continued, Israel asked Tiffany softly as he helped her hobble to the car. Definitely, she said, and the smile she flashed him seared itself in his mind. Suddenly he knew that he wanted to see that smile forever, and he would never let Tiffany push him away again.